What is up guys? Malcolm back again from Majestic Skies Visual Effects. And today I have a really exciting tutorial for you guys. I'm showing you guys how to create this dynamic uh, conveyor belt, which um, rigid bodies can interact with, as well as this pretty cool cloth simulation, just to kind of finish it up within Blender 2.8. We're gonna try to do all this in under 10 minutes. It might go a little bit longer than that, but we're gonna try to keep it under 10 minutes. And by the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to go right up to Pixar Studios and go, hey guys, you remember that scene from Toy Story 2 where Buzz, Woody, and all your favorite characters are running along the conveyor belt at the airport? Well, uh, I can do that in Blender, so um, you know, definitely give me a full-time job here at Pixar, guys. I got you covered, got you covered. <laughs> so anyways, without further ado, let's get started. So we're just gonna open up a brand new scene in Blender. We're just gonna start by deleting absolutely everything. We're gonna go Shift A, add in a curve, Bezier curve. We're gonna go into the edit mode for that by hitting tab. Gonna select this handle here, rotate Z, negative 45, perfect. Then what we're gonna do is just kind of scale this so it's about the same size as the other one. And we're gonna scale it down a little bit as well. Scale that right there. And we're just gonna create the curve for our conveyor belts. We're gonna grab that, rotate it, um, believe, sorry, I gotta go the other way. Um, we're actually gonna start on this direction. We're gonna heat, hit E to extrude, and then hit R to rotate, negative 90. And we do need to go this direction or it's gonna be a little bit glitchy. You can fix it, but it just makes it easier if you just go this direction with extruding it. And we're just gonna hit E to extrude, R to rotate, and negative 90 as well. Just kinda of make this handle roughly the same size as that one up there, hit E to extrude again, X, and just kind of line that up with the top one there, get roughly the same size. E to extrude again, R to rotate, negative 90, S to scale, just to kind of get that roughly the same position as the other side. Select the last one you just created and then the first handle and just hit F, and that's gonna tie those together. And then we got our curve done. We're gonna add in a cube just by exiting edit mode, shift A, add mesh cube. Just gonna scale it down on the Z axis by hitting SZ and then bring it down quite a bit. And then SX and bring it over there, SY. And then we're just gonna kind of pick the rough um, um, form we want for this, this conveyor belt as far as size goes. Just kind of scaling it to my, my liking there. Hit Control A, apply the rotation and scale we just created. Now what we're gonna do is add an array modifier onto the cube in object mode. Just gonna turn that up to maybe around 20. Pretty high value is good. Then we're going to add a curve modifier and we're just gonna select our Bezier curve. And there you can see now it's curving around it like we want. We're just gonna increase the count of this. And now if, you, if you'd like to, you could also add a gap, like I showed you in the example. So if you wanna add a bit of a gap between these, you can certainly do that pretty easily. Let's go in there and add a gap, which you can get some other cool effects with that, but in this particular tutorial, we're gonna do a pretty much a perfect conveyor belt. Just gonna make it a little bit more interesting. And then we're just gonna SX, just gonna pull it over. And we're gonna leave a little gap, because I believe conveyor brakes usually do have a tiny little gap in it. It'll just make it easier to see it rotating. Um, now, you're, what you're probably noticing is the rotation is pretty bad on this. So in order to fix that, all we need to do is go in edit mode for the cube we created and then hit control R to add in a bunch of loop cuts and we're just gonna add in a bunch right there. And now it's looking smoother. Other thing is it's still not crazy smooth. We just gotta go into the options for the, uh, the curve, increase the resolution of that to maybe like 64 and boom, that's it. So now it's basically all set up. All we need to do now is we do actually need to apply the array modifier, um, unfortunately, or the uh, rigid body effects will not work. Just kind of a weird quirk of how this uh, technique works. So apply the array modifier, leave the curve modifier on. And then what we're going to do is make this a rigid body object. So rigid body, we're gonna make this passive and animated and now this is an important step that we do all this basically. We also wanna go in here and change the shape from convex hull to mesh, make it deform, and then also check deforming because our curve modifier is deforming this and that's telling the rigid body system that this mesh has been deformed. So 
that's perfect. Now what we're going to do is we want to animate this so that it's moving. So we're just going to split this window here by selecting there and just pulling it upwards. We're going to go into the graph editor. And now we're just going to hit N in the 3D panel here. With our cube selected, we're just going to insert a single keyframe for the x-axis here. That should be good. Then we're going to go and add a modifier onto uh, that x location in the graph editor. And we're going to add a generator. And what this is going to do is it's going to make it consistently move in the x-axis um, at a set speed. So that's what we want. So we're just going to set this to 0 0.1, which in my testing was a good value. Now you can see it's rotating around nice and quickly but not too quick, so that should be a good good value there. And I'll set a little bit lower, actually even that's a little a little too fast. Point zero seven maybe, there we go. So now we can see that's working, and now we can go ahead and test it. So what we're going to do is go Shift A Mesh, and we're gonna add in a cube, scale that down quite a bit, right about there should be good. And we're just gonna pull that back on the X axis. Now we're going to make that a rigid body as well, and there you go, you can see that that is working properly. So there you go, we've done it. Now if you wanna duplicate this, it's pretty easy. If you wanna add a bunch like in my example, just simply add in an empty, select everything except for that cube, and then select the empty last, get control P, parent to object, and now we can move around our conveyor belt and it will continue to be animated at the same speed we set. You can also go in and obviously animate the generator if you want to adjust the speed of the conveyor belt. Like if we wanted to just move a little bit, stop, move a little bit, and stop, that would be pretty easy to do. Uh, so let's say if we wanted to duplicate this, just select the empty, we'll name this conveyor belt. And we just go Shift D. Whoops. Uh, what you need to do is first make sure you right click and go select hierarchy, and then Shift D, and then you can move it any which way you'd like. Um, you know, sometimes what's fun is if you maybe go upwards a little bit, that can be quite fun to, to watch what it does. We'll see if this makes it up. Sometimes it just flips flips backwards, but that works pretty good. You can see we probably want to set this uh, this cube object to be more of a mesh deformer, so definitely some, some stuff that you might want to change depending on what you're trying to do. But you get the idea. Okay, so now I'm gonna quickly show you guys how to do that claw simulation. Since we don't have too much time, I don't wanna run over 10 minutes here if possible. So what we're gonna do is just quickly make a box for this all to fall into. You'll see up there, and we're just gonna add a solidify modifier. Solidify, and I won't be showing you guys how to do any of the materials just to keep this tutorial nice and quick. Um, so I can show you guys the technique and then you can go ahead and go crazy and uh, and have a lot of fun with it. So just made that a passive rigid body. What we're going to do is add another cube. Just gonna pull that over here. Okay, I'm going to create a little tunnel for it to go through like you saw in the example. Just going to delete these two faces. Then apply another solidify modifier onto that. Solidify, increase the thickness to my liking. Right about there should be good. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the claw simulation. I'm gonna add in a mesh cube. I'm just gonna scale this to the size I want for that. Right about, right about there should be good. Beautiful, all right. I'm gonna scale that down on the x-axis to make it really thin frame and then scale on the z-axis quite a bit to make it nice and tall. Perfect. That should be good. Just kind of pull that up a little bit. Actually, what I'm gonna do is just scale it down just a little bit. We're gonna make it kind of hovering there even though it's not 100% realistic, but for this example, that should be totally fine. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some loop cuts because if we make this a cloth right now, it's not gonna have any geometry to displace, so just add some loop cuts. I will add a few more than that. I should that probably won't look that great. We'll add in like a good amount. There we go. Now one thing you want to do is also go into edit mode, select the top face, and we're gonna apply a vertex group to that. So just go in here to the object panel, vertex groups, add in a vertex group. You won't name it, it's fine. Uh, then we'll go into the physics panel. 
we'll go in here to cloth and then what we're going to do is under shape we're just going to select pin group and pin group and we're just doing that because otherwise this is going to fall down as soon as we start to animate which we don't want but now what we can do is we can go ahead and duplicate this a bunch of times since we got all our settings more or less where we want it to be so you can spend more time making this perfect but just to keep this tutorial nice and quick we're not going to do that okay so that should be good and uh yes to make it more interesting let's add in a suzanne monkey too make that a rigid body as well and i'll just make that a little bit smoother by adding a subdivision surface scale that down right about there should be good and what I'm gonna do is actually just select all of these essentially and just move them because yeah it's just gonna look better if we just put it like right here there we go okay so let's go ahead and put that right there make sure that's gonna fall okay yeah that's good Okay, so we're gonna make that, I think we already made that a rigid body. Now all we need to do now is select this as collision objects because unfortunately Blender's engine, um, cloths do not interact with rigid bodies, but we can do a cool trick to basically still have them having that effect. We're just gonna make this a mesh instead of a convex hull. There we go. Um, so very simple to do. All we need to do is select our objects that are interacting with that. If we just hit F3 and search, and we type in bake to keyframes. We can bake our entire rigid body animation into keyframes, which we're gonna see here in just a second. And if we did everything right here, it should interact just great. There we go. So now you can see we get the effect we want where it's passing through there. Like I said, you can very easily animate this. You probably wanna go in and change the settings for this as well to make it a little bit more realistic. One of the things that, that can help quite a bit um, is actually I'm just gonna get rid of that. I was trying to make that a collision object, but you know, the resolution is just not good enough to to be able to do that right now. But um, what you can do is you can turn on self collision after collisions here, self collision, and uh, sometimes that can make it better. It can also make it kind of glitchy if your resolution for the simulation is not the highest. So yeah we're just gonna leave that off for now but <laughs> you get the gist of it this isn't really a cloth simulation tutorial it's more just showing you the idea of how to do this effect and then you can go crazy and uh, you know learn more about the cloth simulation engine and uh, have a, a lot of fun so i do thank you guys very much for watching this tutorial and make sure to like comment and subscribe for more tutorials like this